And uh, welcome back. Uh, welcome back to Zamin Pilo. And we did say that we are going around with the police. So we have now been brought to one of the shacks where uh, the police have confiscated a few bags of gold dust. And of course, um, uh, the operation seems to be in full swing here because it is being processed. Um, there are some buckets outside and uh, you would see that uh, this is now uh, being mixed with water, uh, it seems. And then I'm not sure what the process is and how it works. Maybe we'll ask someone so they can tell us exactly Exactly how this actually works but Brigadier Spears is still with us we're gonna go in apparently there is a big drum of um, this gold dust and uh, in this particular shack and we are on the inside we did get permission from the police to come in and as you can see uh, this uh, black uh, wheelie bin in the corner here this uh, we couldn't uh, the police couldn't bring this out uh, but this is uh, the gold dust uh, part of what has been found which will then be further processed and worked down and you can actually see the gold sparkles at least from my vantage point I can see it so this is what will then be further processed uh, thank you so much uh, members of the police assisting as well with their cameras uh, just so that we can actually get a shot because it is quite dark in here uh, so there are of course uh, beds in here so evidently there are people who live here um, there's a bicycle uh, indication that there might be children um, there's some clothes and this is somebody's home obviously uh, but it is also a place where some of the uh, processes uh, processing of the gold dust is taking place so we are going to move on out and um, as we say we have witnessed right now uh, the arrest of two more people here in Zaminpilo as we make our way out. Uh, here's some of the uh, gold dust, uh, more of it, that was brought out of the same shack. So um, just trying to locate uh, Brigadier Spears so he could just uh, give us some walking commentary on what is actually happening here. So Brigadier, we came to this particular shack. You were brought here uh, again. Intelligence, uh, you were told that this might be a place to look at. It's correct, yeah, we have the individual, like this is a suspect now, you see, uh, so he accompanied us, you know, to this uh, place. So, so the team leaders, the other members are led by team leaders, they're out there, so I must still get a briefing from them as to more successes, what else they found, but we are still at work for now. So from here, um, this is of, uh, is this by the definition of what the scale of the operation is here? Is this a big find? Not, definitely not a big find. It's small, you know, uh, in respect of what we know and experienced before. Uh, but we're still searching. Let's hope we find something bigger than this. So where are we moving to next? We still saturating we're still busy in this area for now we're not finished yet so i'm communicating with the different team leaders and uh, they'll give an indication to say they are ready you know as the briefing indicated in the morning and then we'll go for you know the next phase or option b but for now we we'll, we're not over yeah one of the things that the community was asking about brigadier spears was about actually going and making sure that those who are underground are actually also um, you know arrested we saw one of the entry points uh, we were told as we came into the informal settlement so is there any sort of plan in that regard uh, because the community seems to think that the police are scared of actually moving in here yeah, we plan operations, you know, and uh, with crime intelligence, of course, and uh, the technical side, you understand, I don't want to say too much about that, you see, but we, although they hide or they disappear, you know, in the holes, uh, we, we also arrest, you know, quite a number of them, you know, uh, given the plans, you understand, that we execute. And then there is, of course, a, a small matter of the, the weapons, the artillery that is at play here. Um, that, of course, is what's being used to terrorize the community. That is, of course, what is being used to wage the turf wars. Are you winning on that front? Have you confiscated any weapons during these raids? Yeah, with uh, the raids or the operations, you know, we... 
conducting these operations uh, 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 with crime intelligence, it's information driven, these operations. So we try every and every time. We don't stop, you know. Sometimes we win, sometimes we don't. But uh, we are here, you know, to assist, you know, in respect of any piece of information. The community can play a big role into this. They are here, you know, <coughs> living out here, you understand, among and beside these people. So we really relying on them also, you understand, to come to the party and assist us and lead us. But they've been doing that. They've been doing that and they feel let down by law enforcement because they say, you know, they are under siege. They can't go out of their homes. Uh, the people here in Zamimpilo, beyond a certain point uh, of the day, they can't go out. They can't even leave their homes in the morning until it is safe to do so. So what more must the community do? Isn't this where law enforcement needs to do its part? It's correct, yeah, we won't stop, you understand, acting on information from the community. You know, we won't stop. If we get something now, we'll mobilize, you understand, and do what is right. You see, so, so if there's success, you know, it's fine with us. If there's no success, but we'll continue, you understand, we won't just leave it, you know, as information. We must execute and act on any piece of information. But let me say this, uh, Brigadier uh, Spears, is there, or let me ask the question first, is there a plan, is there uh, a, a strategy that you are following uh, with a long-term view to shutting down these operations? Is there any plan? Yes, there is a plan, you understand, for the province. We are here in just one space, you understand, uh, uh, out of many other spaces, there's West Rand, this is Jobek, we have Panonis, you have Kurleni. So there is a plan with role players within each of these spaces. We coordinate, we meet, you know, on a regular basis, we collect information, you see, and we act accordingly. So there is a plan. I want to know more about that plan as the brigadier actually answers his phone because, uh, you know, otherwise it, it, it just feels as though uh, we are going in circles. We are here now because there's been the shooting that took place and then next week we would have forgotten about Zamin Pilo and we move on to the next big thing. So uh, this is why I'm asking what is that plan and, and, and uh, what exactly are the success indicators that that plan is actually working? Um, and I want to come back to that point. But uh, I am now joined by um, uh, one of the community members who also is um, a part of uh, the uh, mining council's uh, work here in this community and he also works with benchmarks foundation as we just give a space for the police to move across with the two uh, suspects they are now suspects who have been arrested by this police and um, uh, mr hotel uh, if you could just step in for us good morning um, i just want you to talk to us about what we see here and what what is actually happening with this? Okay, uh, what you're basically looking at here is a washing process. Okay, um, and this is the ancient way. You know, in the 1800s when gold was first discovered, this is the way they used to refine gold. Okay, and this is departing all the particles from the gold. Okay, um, the question we should actually ask here is, mercury is required to divide all the particles from the gold. Mercury is a highly toxic and dangerous chemical and can only be obtained over the counter by a chemist, okay? So where do these guys get the mercury from as well? We also would like to know because it's very, very, very expensive, okay? But what we're looking at here is a washing process yes. where they're parting the mud, the sand and all the metals yes. and uh, foreign metals from the gold, okay? From a handful, you can sit up with uh, a little gram, okay? It depends what type of soil and what areas you are digging, mm. right? Or you come from underground where there is more potential for mm. gold nuggets, you okay. understand? And so, so, so in terms of, uh, you say they can sift through this and maybe come up with a gram of gold. How much does that sell for? Well, a gram, a gram easily goes for about... Um, 800, was it? Uh, eight, over 3,000 rand, right? Um, it's different prices, you understand? Mm. Um, but uh, what, we, what we really know in this country of South Africa is 
our golden diamonds goes to the biggest bidder. You understand? So if you take the US dollar and you take the British pound, who weighs the most is the British pound. You understand? So all our minerals are going out of South Africa is going to Britain because they are pay the most. If so you can take it. what I'm trying to figure out, and the community leaders are also still here, um, uh, Brigadier Spears is just calling us, uh, we can have this conversation as we're walking. Um, I, I, I'm trying to figure out, just in terms of the uh, processes, um, what is actually going on um, with this particular product. Once it is refined, where do they actually take it? Uh, we are now joined by more police and uh, General Mtombeni. Is it? Yes. Thanks so much for coming through and speaking to us, General. So uh, just uh, the overall assessment so far of what's been taking place here in Zamimpilo this morning. Well, uh, we have uh, taken uh, our contingency into the space, of which uh, we have done uh, reinforcements in terms of uh, the workforce. As you could see outside, uh, it is uh, integrated. Uh, you're having uh, your public order policing, uh, Metropolis, you're having South African Police Service, you're having uh, from National, you know, the Mobile Operation Center, the National Intervention, as well as uh, at the police station, we're setting up in terms of our plan, we're setting up a processing center because in the Early hours of the morning, Brigadier Spires, he have spoken to you relating to people whom we have uh, picked up and uh, we're taking them to the processing center. The processing center is where we have to deal with uh, these individuals holistically in terms of processing them, you know, your home affairs. We have to take uh, the fingerprints and all those other things uh, before we can uh, ultimately uh, take them into the detention. General Ntombeni, and, and this was the question that I was uh, going to ask Brigadier Spears, but you are here now even better. I want to know about the plan, you know, in simple English, simple steps. What is the bigger plan to deal with the issue of Zama Zamas in Gauteng? Because, you know, we are in Zamimpilo today. Uh, tomorrow, Every other day we hear of bodies being found on uh, the N12 uh, in um, Eguruleni. Uh, if we're not here, we're in uh, Krugersdorp, you know, on the, uh, further on the West Rand. So what is the plan? Uh, the main plan what will uh, indicate that uh, it has, uh, of course, to include the uh, Department of uh, Mineral Resources and uh, Energy. Uh, and of course, uh, the role players which have indicated for the South African Police Service, not forgetting uh, uh, from uh, the city, uh, Ada is or or Johannesburg, because in Gauteng we mainly have um, this uh, illegal mining uh, taking place in Western Johannesburg and uh, Ekuruleni. Uh, we have got a plan now in terms of ensuring that the holes. You know, those holes that are the biggest problem. Where we are currently standing here, <clears throat> we do also have a hole. Ne? Mm -hmm. But uh, over and above that, you have in this processing centre. That's why now we have deployed the team scene in India to deal with that. We want to ensure that at the end of the day, we deal with these uh, main holes. If we deal with main holes, we'll be in a position to can uh, deal with uh, people uh, here on the ground. If I may indicate, for example, in uh, Johannesburg, we're having mainly, though we are not going to ignore the other holes, we are mainly having uh, some of the holes, for example, in Rodiport, you know, you are uh, uh, soil plaky. Uh, there's a very big hole there in Marisbeck, as we are indicating along, uh, you know, along the highway. We're having also these two here. The other districts, they are also having those uh, uh, issues. And uh, yesterday we, me we met uh, a company which uh, has to deal with the issues of mining within uh, West Rand, of which uh, is a project. Uh, that project is bigger, of which at the end of the day, 
they will on our deliberations they will be also be in a position to can assist in terms of uh, dealing with the main holes because the biggest mm. problem is the is the main holes yes that is a problem but here you have zamin pilo so i'm trying to understand what is preventing you what precludes the south african police service from surrounding this area coming in and doing an intense a uh, sting on this particular area, um, given what we saw. We saw people shooting at each other. You know, uh, last week, one uh, member of the community was shot and killed. Uh, what, what are you doing? Uh, and, and with respect, I hear what you say, but I'm still not hearing the plan, the actual plan to eradicate this particular situation. Uh, as I've indicated to you, mainly uh, we, our plan is to deal with the main holes. And uh, I must indicate that uh, uh, in terms of our plan, we linked to the Operation Shaniela. We systematically deal with the mines. This space, we have been in this space doing exactly what you are indicating. In terms of combing this area and uh, out of that operation, we had uh, quite uh, a successful operations because we had these pendukas, we had the gold dust. But as and when you leave, these uh, uh, illegal minings, they emerge. So that's why I'm saying on the main, the, these main holes where they are digging, if we deal with that precisely, we will be in a position to can uh, push down the issue of uh, the illegal minings. Mm. We have been here, we have been here uh, doing exactly what you are indicating, saying coming, uh, mm. the word which we have used. So, so we, 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 we have dealt with that. Even last week, uh, Thursday, ne? Yes. last week, Thursday, we were in this space with Operation Shanyela. So what about the other role players? And, and I've asked the question about um, those at the head of the syndicates, because it is clear that this is organized. So there, there's much more going on than what meets the eye here in Zamimpilo. Um, what about the explosives that are used? You know, not everybody has access to that. Where is it coming from? What is your intelligence telling you? What about the mercury that is used in the processing? Where are they getting it from? Who is selling it? Uh, surely it should not be too difficult to be able to go into records because there has to be record keeping for the sale of these items to find out exactly where this comes from. Yeah, indeed, uh, uh, the issue of uh, the other role players, I think uh, your question uh, here is in line of indicating uh, the illegal mining which is on the higher level. The illegal mining which is on the high level which we call because we're having levels, you know, level one, level two, and then level three upwards. Uh, the DPCI, the Hawks, uh, they deal with that. We are, of course, within the province with the intelligence and then the, the DPCI, the Hawks, uh, under the leadership of uh, General Kadwa, uh, taking into account for those uh, uh, places where we have this uh, illegal mining which shows that uh, clearly that uh, we have got a problem. For example, in uh, West Rand, we had a, a project which was registered there, where we managed to terminate it uh, last year in October with uh, 16, with uh, six arrests, uh, 17 vehicles impounded, and of which uh, currently out of six, uh, those uh, five suspects, they're still in custody, they're denied bail, and then the accounts were freezed. And um, we are trying to deal with uh, the issue of uh, uh, assets uh, for future. And uh, in that collaborations, we are in a position to can uh, nip uh, this issue of illegal mining on the bat. Uh, I agree that uh, we should uh, do more, but in terms of the phase of dealing with uh, these issues of illegal mining, more especially on this space, we are dealing with it and uh, that collaboration has to be there so that we can ensure that we deal with it precisely with what we have uh, in Western in terms of what I have uh, indicated to you.
And what about the buyers? What is your intelligence telling you about who is actually buying the proceeds of what is being mined here? Well, uh, when you deal with uh, this issue in terms of uh, level three upwards, uh, you include also the buyers. That's why we're in a position in a Western to crack it up uh, with a six RS with a 17. The 17 vehicle is not just ordinary vehicles. <laughs> and uh, we were in a position to can also uh, freeze the accounts uh, as uh, that uh, lead into the issue of uh, saying that uh, these are the people who are mainly uh, driving this process of illegal mining. All right, uh, uh, General Ntombeni, Brigadier Spears, as we wrap this uh, uh, broadcast up here for Morning Live, we're just going to take a final walk uh, because we understand uh, the operation continues. And uh, as we move around, uh, just to see uh, where next uh, the police are moving to uh, to effect some arrests, as you heard uh, General Ntombeni saying, they are combing the area. And uh, we have been told about a hole that is here in the informal settlement as well and this of course of great concern because uh, these holes seem to be cropping up all over the show where this illegal mining is taking place and uh, that of course is something that the city as well will have to pay heed to so uh, this is a Zamimpilo informal settlement and uh, we've come here this morning just to take a look at what is happening to listen to the community uh, their outcry and um, they feel that they are not given the necessary protection by the uh, law enforcement officials the law enforcement officials out in full force here this morning in Zamimpilo and uh, we are moving with them and unfortunately we are coming to the end of our broadcast here on morning live but we are now on the other side of Zamimpilo we've literally walked right through the informal settlement and uh, following the police as they do their business here this morning and uh, this is on the other side as we continue to walk and um, as you can see it is a place of such squalor and people live here unfortunately and um, this is where a lot of the illegal activity actually takes place just have to thread carefully here so that we don't fall but uh, this is Samimpilo as we come to you from Rivoli this morning uh, jumping across puddles, as it were, and um, moving across. The police are walking through and, of course, effecting arrest as they move along. This is what we could bring you from Zamimpilo this morning. This is in Rivoli, uh, following uh, the gun battles that were run here on the streets of Rivoli. And the police are here the SAPS, the Tactical Response Unit, Metro Police also out here in full force. And this is what is happening in Zamimpilo this morning. We've literally done a 360 around the area. And Leanne, this is where we are going to leave it.